Welcome to this week's program of Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burdick. And we are including, as well, our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy, and our book correspondent, Jennifer Brooks. Okay. This week's program will be uh, Autism and the Job Coach. And before we begin, I've got to ask Will, what's with your shirt this week? I'm glad you asked. This week's shirt is my Autism Awareness is my autism awareness shirt. I, I got it from, from the autism awareness game at USF Baseball. It, it, there, it was their autism, they were, they were playing, the, the, it, was, it was autism awareness month and they were having a, a they, they were celebrating it at, at their, their first baseball game. Thanks Will. You've been involved with that program for a lot, long time haven't you? You've done a lot of things with USF Baseball and USF? Ever, uh, oh, oh, I've, I've, I've been doing, it, I've been doing it all season. I, I, I've, I've been going to their games and watching them on TV. And, and, and next, next Sunday, I'm going to their last game at, at USF. They're, they're playing their old rivals, Santa Clara. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for letting us know that. Now, to begin with, uh, Will is going to interview our guest, uh, Aaron Maitland of Caminar. And to begin with, I have to make a disclaimer. I am not neutral on Aaron. I am very positive on him. He has been very successful in working with my son and has gotten him a very good part-time job. So thank you very much, Aaron. Will, take it from there, please. Gladly. First question. Could you tell us about Caminar and its roles in employment for adults on the autism spectrum? Definitely. So Caminar is a nonprofit organization um, originally based in San Mateo. Um, and they were designed to work with folks with disabilities, originally folks with uh, mental illness. Um, we came to San Francisco a few years ago with our Jobs Plus program and expanded our services to folks um, with physical disabilities and folks also on the autism spectrum. Um, so at Kim and our Jobs Plus program, we offer job development services, um, some interview prep, resume, cover letter counseling, um, networking skills, and then we also provide job coaching once folks already have a job. Um, so we help them find jobs that fit their skills, interests, and experience, and then we help them keep the job um, so that they can keep it for the long run. How did you come to Caminar? Well, I originally started doing job development and job coaching up in Sacramento um, and realized that I wanted to come back to the Bay. Um, so I started looking around at agencies and organizations that were operating in the Bay doing what I wanted to do, which was particularly working with folks um, on the autism spectrum, and found Caminar had a really great reputation um, for doing just that. So I came all the way down from Sacramento and told them that I wanted to come work with them, and they were... Uh, they were willing to, to take me on and let me join the team. What did you do as a job counselor and job coach? So at Caminar, I play both roles. Um, primarily, I do the job development side of things. So I'll meet with individuals. We'll talk about skills, experience, um, and I'm really big in focusing on people's individual interests and, and hobbies. I think if people are interested in the work that they're doing, they're going to be more likely to enjoy it and more likely to stick with it. So we try and identify jobs um, and job opportunities where people are going to be a good fit. Um, when I switch into the job coach side, I then go in, help people um, facilitate their training, so go through the new hire process, make sure that they find a good fit. Um, I interact with their managers, make sure that everyone um, from managers, supervisors, even their coworkers are on board with what it's like to work with someone with a disability or someone on the autism spectrum, understand how to ask questions, and make sure that the person who's gotten the job um, knows who they can go to for help or support if they have questions. 
Um, I also try and focus on empowering people to use the skills and abilities that they already have. So doing some critical thinking, asking questions in a different way, um, and really focusing on learning styles so that people can be the best that they can be in their new positions. How many clients do you work with? That varies pretty regularly. I think right now I've got uh, 25 people, um, who, some of whom have jobs already and we're working on um, what we would call the retention, so making sure that they keep their jobs. And then I've got um, probably 15 or so who are still actively looking for jobs and we're making progress with that. Um, but we're always getting new people sent to us. So there's always new people coming through the door, um, letting us know that they um, don't have a job and they want one, or they have a job but they want to move up, or they want to progress their career, and we're always willing to accept them. So can you tell us, Erin, about some of the jobs that your clients do? Right. Um, so a lot of the folks that come to us, um, they all actually have different job interests. So we get a lot of folks who come to us looking for janitorial or maybe some sort of retail or grocery store jobs. Um, we also get folks who are interested, especially in this area, in tech. So we try and help them find jobs that would fit that. Um, we've also had folks who have wanted to be uh, tax accountants or tax preparers. Um, I once had someone who wanted to fix pinball machines and mm -hmm. we were able to find something to do that. So we Good really did. Um, we get a good variety of, of interest. So tell, tell us more about some of the you know, more interesting types of jobs that you find. I understand that's a particular specialty of yours. Yeah. Um, well, that pinball machine one was, was really interesting because um, you think about it, pinballs are kind of a dying breed. Mm -hmm. um, so when this particular individual came to us um, and said that, you know, that was what they wanted to do, we really had to think about how we were going to make this happen. Um, and we happened to find uh, a barcade. Um, mm -hmm. that was just lined with not only pinballs, but old school arcade games. We've got Pac-Man, mm -hmm. Centipede. And as it turned out, they needed someone who knew enough about pinballs and this person's you know, master pinball player um, who could go in and maintain the machines. Um, and it turned out to be a pretty big need, especially in that particular environment where things are always being spilled mm -hmm. or broken. Um, and that was really cool, not only to help that particular individual find that job, but then to go in as his coach. And then, you know, he was able to teach me things about fixing pinball machines. And that's by far my favorite part of the job is, is learning and being, you know, being educated by the people I'm supposed to be helping. Excellent. And along those lines, how do you go about finding uh, these very interesting jobs as well as, as the more conventional ones you do? What do you do to find those people's jobs? Right, that's kind of a, a two-fold approach. Um, the internet and technology definitely mm -hmm. comes in handy. So we can go through job postings, we can go through, through classifieds and use the typical routes um, to identify open positions. But for some of those positions, um, the pinball one in mm -hmm. particular, there wasn't already a job available. So at that point, we then think about the types of places who are, who are already doing what a particular person wants to do. And then we go talk to them and we ask questions, um, mm -hmm. ask them what they do here. And we try and identify spots where they're falling short. Maybe it's bottlenecks in their processes or maybe they're overwhelmed in a particular mm -hmm. area. And we then, you know, point out the person that I'm working with and I, you know, explain this would be a really great person to do what it is that you need help doing and they already know about this. Excellent. Are there particular challenges that you face either with folks generally on the spectrum or with some uh, of the, your particular clients? Um, I'd say some of the challenges are um, folks feeling a sense of empowerment and, and that self-advocacy. Um, a lot of times folks come to me um, with goals that have already been set, but they haven't necessarily been set by them. It's something that they've yeah. been told that they've been good at or that they should be interested in this. And so we definitely take those things into account and use that as advice, but I also like to go through what I, um, you know, call, you know, that personal discovery phase mm -hmm. where we really identify not only the skills that that person has, but where would they ultimately be happy and what kinds of jobs. So I think moving past that, what a person has been told and really mm -hmm. empowering them to make decisions for themselves and do some exploration um, can sometimes be a little tricky.
Mm -hmm. but we get through it. Excellent. Now, apart from working with a job coach, um, are there any things like such as you've mentioned that are viewers who might be looking for work or the people in their lives who might be helping them can do along these lines to sort of start the process of thinking about the sort of things they want to do and what they're good at as apart from what they're told? Mm -hmm. um, I think Definitely applying for services and getting the ball rolling as far as funding um, can play a big part. The sooner that you can do that, the, the better, um, especially with changes in, in legislation and new pieces coming down um, mm -hmm. for transitional age youth, for instance. Um, getting the ball rolling on that so that you can identify training as soon as possible and access to mm -hmm. work skills. Um, but even doing just kind of a personal inventory on your own of things that interest you, whether it be stores that you go to mm -hmm. or hobbies that you have and the people and, and the parts of your community that you're already accessing and thinking about where you might want to find yourself in there. Um, and then having an idea of who to go talk to about mm -hmm. that. Um, you could, doing that on your own is, is a huge step. And then if you were to go to a job developer or a job coach, having that piece of the puzzle already in place um, makes the process a lot smoother. Excellent. What do you do as a job coach on, on the job? Good question. So a job coach um, will do different things depending on the needs of whoever they're <coughs> supporting. So um, sometimes folks don't need the job coach with them on the job, job and need someone to check in with them offsite. We can do that. Um, for folks who need that person there with them, we go to the job site with them. And that uh, can look like a lot of different things, again, depending on what the person needs. So we'll go through their training with them, make sure that they really understand the, the information that's being presented to them. Um, if they need longer training, if they need another demonstration, if they need more time to practice, we'll help them advocate for those things and uh, set them up um, in an environment where they can really learn um, new skills and enhance the skills that they already have. Um, we also help them with the run-of-the-mill things that people don't normally think about. So how to ask for time off, how to get your paychecks, um, how to uh, make a complaint if something isn't going the way that it should be when you're on the job. We want to really identify um, all of the different pieces of having a job um, other than just doing the work itself and make sure that the, the new employee understands how to do all of those things. In your job, can you talk about how you individualize? Yeah. Um, as, so as far as customizing a job for a particular individual, mm -hmm. um, a lot of that is sitting down and having an actual conversation mm -hmm. with the person. Mm -hmm. So really, um, you know, I'll have a list of questions already in my mind and sometimes I'll take notes. Um, but really sitting down and asking them, you know, what do you do when you're not at work, when you're not at school, mm -hmm. when you're not sitting in front of me, what are you doing? Right. Um, and then, you know, where are you doing this? Who are you doing this with? Mm -hmm. And how do we... Um, trying to identify what their what a person's real interests and their mm -hmm. real aspirations are um and sometimes their career goals are different from what their hobbies are and they don't want to yeah. mix those things mm -hmm. um and so we we respect that and we mm -hmm. and we follow through um but really give them the chance to really explore on their own and mm -hmm. have um some some deeper thought and critical examination of what they want to do have you met those who've wanted it as a hobby and as a profession yeah um the 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 pinball guy i was referring oh, okay. to he okay. was um he's like a master pinball player and he travels okay. over the country yes. um and it was interesting when he originally came to us everyone told him he would never get a job as that and so that he should look oh. for something else right. um and so for a while we did you know we did look for things to kind of to fill in the gaps and help him you know get a job in the meantime but we did not give up on that piece of it and it ended up working out really well for him he ended up with two jobs actually oh that's great yeah yeah that's good so i have a couple of questions for you yeah the first is what kind of services do you offer to students who are still in school full-time not ready to get a, go out and get a job immediately mm -hmm. but know they're going to be approaching graduation and will eventually need to get started on job search so uh, Caminar, my particular agency, has a supported um, education program as well. So we'll support folks while they're still in school, um, 
make sure that they finish out their degrees, um, get them the su supports in their education that they might need, um, and then also point them in the right direction toward vocational services as they're preparing to, to exit school. Um, I currently don't do a lot in the school systems, um, but there certainly are the are other organizations and there is access to those services um, in the city and throughout California. Um, so I'd say if you're kind of in that stage, then talking to whether it be a regional center counselor, a DOR counselor, whoever your support team is in as you're thinking about um, vocational services and entering the work um, the workforce, um, thinking about ideally what you what you would want to do and where you'd want to apply the education that you just worked really hard to get, um, and and coming up with some some goals and then taking that to um, whomever you want to help you find a job. And speaking of education, there are people who have very high levels of education, often <laughs> in very technical fields, <laughs> such as computer science. Or for myself, I'm about to get a master's degree in statistics mm -hmm. and there is the attitude that if somebody has that kind of education they must be really smart therefore it should be really easy for them to get a job but often those people face barriers such as not being able to perform well in job interviews mm -hmm. how would you assist someone like that yeah, the, even with um, the education background and, and, and a fantastic resume, it can really be really difficult to get a job. Yes, um, it can. So one of the things that I work with folks on doing um, is practicing and doing a lot of role playing for interviews. Um, and that, that can be helpful. Um, just getting that practice in ahead of time can kind of calm the nerves and make that process easier. Um, but we also focus on other ways to get a job. Um, there are other ways to get a job? There are other ways to get a job. There's kind of that saying it's, um, it's all about who you know. So figuring out the people who are already doing what it is that you want to be doing or doing something similar to what you want to be doing. Um, I'm a really big fan of what I call informational interviews. So it's kind of flipping the table. Um, and instead of you know, walking into a room and letting someone in a position of power ask you questions, um, you going in and asking them questions. Um, so I'll take folks with me who you know want a job at a particular company and we'll call them up and you know I'll tell them hey I'm a career counselor um, I don't know anything about what you're doing I'd like to give some sound advice can you come answer some questions and we'll go in and we'll have a conversation um, and the nice part about that is people um, especially managers or people who are doing you know really cool jobs love to talk about themselves and so if you already demonstrate that you have an interest in them and what they're doing they're really forthcoming with information and advice um, and a lot of times they'll be willing to to help you out in your own career endeavors um, and whether it be offering advice on who to talk to or making referrals taking those alternate paths than just submitting an application online can which really, often goes nowhere yeah <laughs> it can really bolster your your career search so I'd say finding those alternate routes inside um, can be really helpful thank you we now turn to our book correspondent, Jennifer Brooks, and our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Thank you, Keith. I'm Jennifer Brooks, book correspondent. Today, I'm here to tell you about two books. The first is Emergence, Labeled Autistic by Temple Grandin. Many of you may know Temple Grandin. HBO did a movie of her life approximately 10 years ago. This is one of the first books that she published. It was actually first published in 1986, 31 years ago, but just because it's old doesn't mean it's bad. The book provides quite a bit of insight into Temple Grandin's sensory struggles. It's especially remarkable because this was written during a time when most people would have thought that everyone experiences the world in exactly the same way and this book was part of the groundbreaking movement that started people realizing that that's not in fact true so emergence by temple grandin the second book i want to tell you about is only available as an ebook it is available at a website called rounddeadglobe.com www.rou 
N D E D G L O B E dot com. You can search for the title The Prehistory of Autism. This book shatters the myth that autism is something that popped up out of nowhere sometime during the 1990s. In truth, it has been part of our human history for at least 100,000 years and may in fact have played a critical role in the development of human civilization and human culture as we know it. I think of sometime during the Stone Age when a caveman, or for all we know it could have been a cave woman, was chipping away at a rock while everyone else was chit-chatting around the campfire. And when the person is finished, he rolls it over to the campfire and says, look everybody, me call it wheel. Expecting everyone at the campfire to appreciate the brilliance and the world changingness of this invention, invention, but instead they just laugh and say, crazy ug, why doesn't he ever chit chat around the campfire like normal cave people do? Hello, um, today I'd like to, um, like to mention some events or fun stuff that are happening in the Bay Area. Um, there's a uh, neurodiversity at Pinterest, in, which will be in combination with a job club um, on Saturday, May 20th. And um, the speaker is going to be Abby Maldonado, who is of interest power um, of Pinterest. He, she is um, a diversity programs manager and helps lead Pinterest. Pinterest, excuse me, efforts to diversify its workforce through external outreach and by implementing date-driven uh, internal programs. And prior to her diversity role, she has managed Pinterest intern programs as a member of the university recruiting team and traveled the workforce investment um, San Francisco board. So that will be uh, Saturday, May 20th, starting at 10 a.m. at the ARC. Uh, Sunday, May uh, 21st, uh, there's a sensory friendlies hour at the Tech Museum of Innovation in San Jose, and it's 201 South Market Street. It'll start at 9.30 a.m., and it'll be a time for families to enjoy a quieter, less crowded visit to the Tech Museum at a discounted rate. And then um, June 3rd will be o the Oakland A's Autism Awareness Day starting at 1.05 p.m. at the Oakland Coliseum. And the address is 7000 Coliseum Way, 94621, Oakland Athletics versus uh, Washington Nationals. So yes, Saturday, June 3rd, um, it will be Oakland A's Autism Awareness Day. Thank you. Aaron, before we wrap up, uh, do you have a particular success story you're proud of? Yeah. Um, actually, this comes from my time uh, up in Sacramento. We were really working with the uh, Municipal Utilities District up there um, to get someone inside. Um, and it took a really long time. This was probably a two to three year investment on our behalf of, of really working with them. And a lot of that was educating them and answering questions about what really could they do. And there was a misconception that we wanted them to create busy work for someone. Um, and after you know a, a lot of, of talking with them, we, we were able to put it across that you know we didn't want busy work. We didn't want to keep this person you know doing you know, busy doing things that didn't matter. We really wanted to contribute and help. Mm -hmm. um, so we were able to get this person um, an internship with them, um, got them into their HR department, and he went through uh, two semesters of an internship, mm. really practicing his skills, learning their systems. And they were so impressed and blown away with the work that he was doing and how much it was helping them um, in doing, uh, in this particular instance, uh, digital archiving of all of their old HR files. They ended up hiring him on. Um, and he's been working there, um, well, let's say for two years now. Excellent. Yeah, he's been doing really great. Excellent. And then finally, at the risk of overwhelming <laughs> everybody over there, uh, <laughs> how can uh, people in the Bay Area reach out to Kaminar, Jobs Plus, and you? Yeah. 
Um, definitely check out our website. So www.caminar.org, um, C-A-M-I-N-A-R. Um, that'll give you more information on us as a whole and particular our Jobs Plus programs and where we operate. Um, in order to become a, a participant in our program, um, we do ask that folks reach out to the Department of Rehabilitation. It's normally we, where we get our funding mm -hmm. to be able to do the work that we do. Um, we have a really great relationship with the, the counselors over there. Um, and so if you uh, are able to approach them and let them know um, that you're interested in working with Caminar or interested in what other services you, they might be able to provide, they'll be able to set you up and send you over. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Aaron. We really appreciate you being a great guest, and I really appreciate the work you do in general, and once again, more specifically for helping my son. So thank you very much. This is our show for this week. I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burdick. I'm Erin Malin. <laughs> I'm Stacey Kennedy. I'm Jennifer Brooks. Okay. Until next time, we're a sand life on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm.